hello and welcome to ET Now Startup Central, India's first and only daily show dedicated to startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Chandra Shrikant coming to you live from ET Now in Bangalore and Krishna, fingers crossed, I just hope there are no more results at least for the next 20 minutes. Same here, Chandra, but uh, first, a check on all the headlines of a tracking her at ET Now Startup Central. Amazon delivers a stellar quarter joining Facebook as one of the rare bright spots in the tech sector, which otherwise saw a slew of disappointing earnings. The e-commerce giant outperformed street expectations, helped by Prime and its Amazon Web Services cloud business. Now, if there's one e-commerce column that kept social media buzz all week, it has to be Saving Private Flipkart, which appeared on Founding Fuel, a learning platform for entrepreneurs. We have the author, Harish Chavla, joining us exclusively on the show today. Flipkart co-founder Sachin Bansal says that he welcomes the new FDI norms, even as the clarifications mean the online major's retail arm, WS Retail, will have to cut down on sales. And on our weekly funding meter, we get you a slice of all the funding action of the week gone by. We kick it off then, Krishna, with the, the world's largest uh, e-tailer, and we're talking about Amazon, which uh, reported a stellar quarter, f stellar first quarter, and uh, uh, which uh, posted its uh, largest ever profit in its history, largely thanks to its cloud business, Amazon Web Services. But I think uh, one aspect that at least all of us were closely tracking in that uh, earnings call was, you know, what they have to say about India and the investments going forward, uh, because remember that's something that's been discussed all this week on uh, uh, you know whether they are really gaining market share at the expense of Flipkart, Snapdeal and considering their local rivals have to struggle to raise funds, Amazon doesn't have to do, uh, do that. So what is going to be their India game plan going forward? Here are the Amazon management talking about that and also the recently released uh, regulations as far as FDI and e-commerce is concerned. Spent a week with our teams in Bangalore and Hyderabad. Um, we're breaking ground on a new 10-acre campus there. Uh, so we are uh, solidifying and increasing our investment in India um, on all fronts. Um, we've had a chance to uh, see firsthand the level of invention going on with both customers and sellers, making deliveries to customers, seeing the I Have Space program we have with merchants. Um, it's a very exciting, uh, exciting time in India. Um, and again, the invention is off the charts. Uh, we're inventing things in India that uh, do not exist in other parts of the country, or excuse me, parts of the world. During the quarter, we rolled out uh, a feature called Takal, which is a studio on wheels that we go to the sellers uh, to help them sign up. We uh, uh, let them do registration, imaging, catalog, uh, uploads, and basic seller training. So uh, we're taking it uh, to the sellers, taking the business to the sellers, um, we've already reached sellers in 25 cities, and we're really helping them uh, expand their business, and not only within their home region, but throughout the whole country. Um, you know, we're happy to see the recent clarifications, and we're happy to operate in any regime. And so, frankly, the, the more clarity, uh, the better. You know, stepping back, the reason we add uh, logistics capability and transportation capability is so we can serve our customers faster and faster delivery speeds. Um, and we've needed to add more of our own capacity to supplement our, our carriers and our partners. They're still, again, great partners, have been, and will uh, continue to be uh, for the future. But um, we see opportunities uh, where we need to add additional capacity, and we're filling those with voids. Amazon certainly rollicking along both India and globally. Moving on, Chandra, this one e-commerce column that kept social media buzz all week, it has to be saving private flip card. I remember the time when I called you up in the middle of the night to read it, uh, uh, which uh, appeared on uh, Founding Fuel, a learning platform for entrepreneurs. The author, Haresh Chavla, a partner at private equity firm, India Value Fund Advisors, set the cat among the pigeons by predicting that Amazon will beat Flipkart in months from now. While views on that continue to stay divided, 
We are now being joined by the man himself and uh, we are really going to question his assumptions uh, uh, in this particular interview. Harish, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us here on 18 Now Startup Central. Uh, lot of divided views uh, coming in for uh, what you wrote. Uh, I quite enjoyed the article per se, I must ha I have to say. But help us understand the data, the arguments that you used to make that uh, bold prediction that Amazon is months away from overtaking Flipkart. So, okay, uh, let me put it this way. I think I think it's clear from even just basic usage of these apps and asking people around that Amazon has been quietly gaining market share. Uh, and frankly, if you talk to a few people in the logistics space who actually handle shipments, uh, and one of the ET journalists has also done that, uh, Madhav has done that, I think, uh, day before yesterday, you'll get a sense of how uh, Flipkart has probably not grown as much uh, as it should have. And Amazon has actually you know, gained a lot of market share. Now people have relied on older reports uh, like Morgan Stanley came out with numbers and those numbers are clearly uh, they're completely and utterly wrong and uh, it was amazing to even see these e-commerce companies like Flipkart and Snapdeal talk about $10 billion in revenue in 2016 whereas they are nowhere near the numbers. So actually it's, it's quite, uh, it just requires a little bit of exploration and stepping back away from the noise that the press releases and the uh, uh, company talk that's coming out to step back and start uh, asking a few more questions and the data comes out and I think that uh, many tech journalists will now put out the real data for everybody to see. Harish, but you know what you say both in terms of user experience, uh, the shipments, I mean all this is you know more of anecdotal evidence. Is that enough to really make a prediction that you know the pecking order will change and change permanently at that? Yeah, sure. So I, I think I think people are taking my article completely out of context if it's about number one. I don't think the issue is number one. The issue is that market share uh, of these players is, is what's reported is completely wrong and the market share is going through a massive shift. And if these companies do not actually tighten their belts and get into the act, they will actually lose their first position. So actually that's what the context of the piece was. Uh, and the fact is that if you look at some of these companies, they have uh, a large part of the portion of uh, uh, your the gross merchandise value coming out of uh, selling smartphones which are a great way to generate GMV. So maybe GMV itself is not a great metric to decide whether a company is number one or number two. But the context was that we have a situation here where uh, kind of uh, money that's being blown up in this space is not giving the returns that it should to these enterprises and they should start looking at how they run their businesses and come up with a better plan. Now, the second part of the story is that they are now fighting strategics. So you have a set of companies that are backed by VCs that have got a limited horizon on the capital and against companies which have got infinite uh, you know, amount, amount, not amount of capital, actually an infinite period that they can continue investing in India. That mindset difference is what's going to change the market share as we go along as well. Harish, you know, a reason why Amazon has managed to stay so laser focused on the customer and why Flipkart had to look at more short term metrics like GME is also the kind of investors they have. How much blame should uh, the VCs and investors really take if Flipkart has been too growth focused? Because at the end of the day, both of us know that GME is what uh, dictates the valuations here in India. See, I don't think it's a blame game at all. The fact is that Amazon wrote the playbook for e-commerce about 15 years ago. Everybody, Amazon, Alibaba, any e-commerce player in the world knows that it's a very thin margin business you're in. Now, if you end up taking your investor money and spending it in creating overheads that probably will never pay off, that's where the issue comes in. How much of investment has gone into creating a loyalty program for customers? How much has gone into creating a credit program for customers? How much has gone into actually Indianizing the business, which is creating a vernacular version of your website or allowing, uh, creating buying guides. And a lot of Indian consumers are gonna first time buy several products in their life. Who's gonna tell them uh, this story? So if all your money has only gone into either building overhead or passing on discounts, this is what's gonna happen. I don't think VCs ever dictated what to do with their money. Therefore, the square, the, not the blame actually, the whole uh, issue actually lies with the way you build your business and that lies only with the founders. Of course, VCs had put this pressure that you show me GMV growth, but I don't think any VC would walk in and say build overheads or, or, or build customer loyalty or retention rates that are so low. Harish, you know, granted that, you know, Flipkart 
can't beat Amazon using Amazon's business model. But if there are levers that Flipkart can still use to its advantage, the local player advantage, what would that be? Now again, you see, you see I, 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 I cannot be sitting in this place and trying to figure out what Flipkart should have done, but I can tell you what it could have done. And, and some of the things are very obvious. I mean, they've been around in the business for eight years. There were many uh, things they could have done on the payment space to build, uh, they could have built a loyalty program, they could have created a credit. I mean, there was no need uh, for me to just keep on pushing out COD. Frankly, for a certain set of heavy customers or Flipkart first customer, they could have just billed me once a month. So there are several small uh, things that could have been done, which could have all added up to a very unique experience uh, uh, with some of these websites. Uh, again, there is no language being used. India is not just an English country. There's Hindi, there's Tamil, there is scores of languages in which you could have created uh, uh, you know, uh, content and scores of languages in which you could have created even buying guides for products. So I just talked about that, that uh, Indian consumers need handholding and support on how to buy, what to buy. And that's, that, that pre-purchase process, nobody seems to have attacked very well at all. Uh, and even just to continue, Maybe an investment in offline retail could have helped them. You know, India has a, uh, actually a retail market, the offline brick and mortar retail is at, at, uh, in, at a nascent stage. And therefore, a combination of uh, offline retail, uh, let's say Flipkart stores, and uh, an online presence would have probably given them much more of a, a mode to defend. Or even a, hop, a shopping channel, for example. Another, another easy way to reach out to millions of people, stamp your brand in their lives, and make sure you buy loyalty. All right, uh, Haresh, uh, you know, we'll keep that uh, debate, uh, which has largely been around uh, Flipkart uh, versus uh, Amazon aside for just a bit. Tell us what happened to the likes of, say, Snapdeal, which Amazon just overtook just a couple of days ago to become the second largest e-commerce player in the country, and for the matter, even Shopclose. So my, you know, I, I have uh, not had a look at the numbers of these players, but my understanding is Snapdeal is also in a bit of a spot here because its overheads are uh, actually as high in comparison to the GMV they generate, uh, though they've been a marketplace for a while. And Shopclose, of course, is a different story. Uh, it's got a, a low overhead operation going. It's been a pure marketplace, but it trades in essentially largely low value uh, products. So it's a different story out there. I think uh, this last six months of uh, resetting uh, of, the, of the entire funding in the market, uh, plus the fact that slowly everybody is realizing that uh, the cost of getting an Indian consumer to come onto your website to transact and then to retain them are very high. So I think some of these realities have come to uh, light only in the past six months, and that's going to, you know, really cause a lot of pain in these companies for a temporary period. I mean, I, I, and I, I believe it will come back to uh, them taking some hard decisions in the next few months, and uh, hopefully they will find uh, fresh investors who will come in, uh, probably at different valuations, but who will come in with a much more solid company with solid econo unit economics to back. So I'm a complete believer in the story. I, you know, I, I think people can again take it out of context that I don't believe in Flipkart. I'm a great fan of their business. But I think uh, the way the situation is, if they don't set things right right now, uh, they may be in a, in, a, in a bigger soup as they go along. Harish, let's talk about the other gorilla then and obviously Alibaba, I mean, it's very clear India is going to be a big market for them. No, There's of course no clarity on whether it's going to be organic uh, through an acquisition. That's something that we're still waiting for. But uh, how is that going to change the dynamics? See, my sense is the new e-commerce policy has made it difficult for an organic uh, play to begin now. Because uh, to some degree, I think uh, Flipkart, Snapdeal, are in a great zone today uh, because of the new policy. They have already built a certain uh, engine and a certain scale. Uh, and with the new policy, a new entrant will find it difficult to just come and buy market share. So in a sense, in, in, that, in that limited sense, uh, their moats are intact. However, the moats are not intact from the other end where their overheads are large, uh, where their customer retention efficiencies are low. So, so in a sense, they, at least one side of the battle has been uh, settled with the new policy. So what could happen is that Alibaba may not make an organic play. They will probably have, would find it better to come and buy an existing player, uh, which could be any of these uh, three or four companies that we talked about. Uh, and, and that's how the battle will probably play out. And for Alibaba and Amazon, uh, I don't think there is uh, any doubt that India is one of, going to be one of their 
most strategic markets to invest in. Uh, uh, China is off the plate, uh, as we all know, uh, for most Western companies. And Alibaba will also look to actually hedge its bet uh, uh, in India. So, yes, over a period of time, the battle could be uh, between these two companies. Uh, Harish, uh, finally, uh, before we let you go, I have just one last thing to ask you. You know, we've uh, covered the online players. Uh, what about uh, the offline ones? Uh, uh, you know, uh, as the way this battle is uh, playing out, you know, I mean, the likes of uh, uh, Biyan is a future group. I met the entire retail community, uh, you know, the offline retail community when the recent clarification in FDI and e-commerce e norms uh, uh, came out. Uh, they seemed quite happy. Tell us, uh, how do you see them featuring uh, when this battle is playing out? If I was an offline player, I'll be, you know, happy for a few days only because I think offline continues to have its challenges. Uh, rentals are high. Uh, people have got into the habit of looking for prices uh, online. And therefore, I don't think it's put them in a much better situation. Uh, what's going to happen now is how they play. At least they've got some breathing room to actually restructure their own businesses, uh, make them more efficient, uh, find a way to create some omni-channel presence where consumers can actually buy uh, online from their uh, uh, warehouses directly as well. So my sense is the battle is still on. I don't think the battle between online and offline is easy. You know, it's going to become any easier for offline. Offline is in a uh, is in a spot that's going to keep on uh, getting tougher uh, as consumers find more choices, more selection, and frankly, more loyalty. I mean, if you if you imagine any all these e-commerce companies actually get their act together and create a nice uh, loyalty program for the consumers. Uh, chances are consumers will find it much easier to sit at home and buy. So, so that's the reality that's facing offline. Uh, what's happening is this crazy pummeling that was happening and this uh, entire distortion of prices uh, that was happening. Uh, that's uh, going to go away and that gives them some breathing room. Thanks so much, Harish, for really taking out time and uh, uh, taking us through not just your arguments on Flipkart, but the broader e-commerce space. But uh, we are staying with e-commerce because we have the man himself, uh, Flipkart's founder and CEO, Sachin Bansal, uh, who gave us a very short and hurried interview where he only spoke about uh, the recent clarifications with respect to FDI in e-commerce. Uh, Krishanu Mukherjee caught up with him in New Delhi. Let's listen in. I think we anything that helps in clarifying and opening up of the economy, I think it's a good thing. Uh, we support that completely. And I think it's a positive step that has happened and uh, there was a need for clarification and it creates a conducive business environment. So we are supportive of that, so absolutely. So you're calling the environment conducive, but the thing is that the restriction of the 25% uh, quota to going to one seller seems to be a stumbling bo block for most of the uh, e-commerce companies in India. Do you currently adhere to that? If not, by when? By when do you think you will uh, begin to adhere to that? I think I think we have always compliant with the laws. Uh, always been compliant with the laws, uh, uh, and we will continue to be compliant with the laws. Uh, absolutely, I think. And uh, of course, I mean, we will help to help our sellers do that uh, in the future, and uh, and we'll have to make changes in the system and configuration to help do that. Uh, uh, and whatever is required, we'll we'll make changes. Yeah. And with that, uh, Chandra, we've arrived at that time and we check on all the uh, investments uh, in the week uh, gone by. Our weekly funding meter powered by Venture Intelligence. $43 million uh, uh, have been struck. Uh, that's the final uh, tally. Ten deals and uh, $43 million worth of deals struck in the week gone by. Uh, the top ones include Transserve, uh, which raised $15 million. Seclor Technology, which raised $12 million. Uh, and uh, clear tax which uh, raised uh, 1.3 million dollars along with uh, docs three. app raising 1.2 million dollars from uh, facebook's uh, angel investors uh, so those were the top uh, deals uh, in the week uh, gone by and the other notable deals uh, uh, for the week include the wellspring healthcare raising 4.5 million dollars licious raising 3 million dollars from mayfield uh, milk basket and uh, uh, May, uh, Mayfield and Milk Basket uh, raising about uh, five hundred thousand dollars. So that is the, as far as the funding action is concerned, in the week gone by, powered by Venture Intelligence. Uh, back to you, Chandra, in Bengaluru.
Thanks for that, Krishna. And you know, like the trend we've been noticing, while VC investments have been volatile, dipping one week, rising one week, I think the only constant is a bunch of very active angel investors. So at least uh, for startups at a very early stage, that's something to take heart from. But uh, with that, we come to the final segment of our day, Number Crunch. And the number we are crunching for you today is uh, 203596. If you're wondering what over $200,000 is all about, it's uh, the total sales in a minute that uh, Amazon witnessed in 2016 so far. That's according to data from Excel.com, a consulting firm. So, I mean, that is humongous, over $200,000 per minute. I'm not sure if Flipkart and Snapdeal release similar data, but I'm uh, sure that will make an interesting comparison, at least if all three give India-specific uh, numbers. But uh, Krishna, that's some number to take away from, and uh, I guess it's the perfect end to a show that's been packed heavily with uh, e-commerce, you know, right from the word go. Chandra, it's been packed with so much of Amazon and talk about Amazon and the number crunch also about Amazon. I just want to remind our viewers that this show wasn't sponsored by Amazon. It just happened to be <laughs> in the scheme of things. But with that, we wrap things up here on this edition of ET Now, Startup Central. But don't go anywhere. Keep watching ET Now. Coming up next is Market Watch. <laughs> Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.